Morning, everybody. Afternoon, depending on where you're watching. I am in Rexburg. I hope you don't mind me being in the car. It's a little cold outside, so I came inside the car. I've actually just uh, written a story that's about to go up on EastIdahoNews.com about what happened this morning at the Daybell hearing. Uh, considering other Daybell hearings, this one was relatively short. It was about an hour, and Chad Daybell's attorney argued that the cases should be severed, that Chad should have a separate trial from Lori, and uh, he, of course, filed a motion back in September that was pretty lengthy, I think over 30 pages detailing his reasonings as to why he wants the cases severed. Um, a few bullet points that came out of the hearing, some of the headlines. Uh, John Pryor said that Chad's defense will be, quote, diametrically different than Lori's and her defense team. That they will be completely different. Whatever Chad's defense to these murder charges, it's going to be different than Lori's. And, and he's, he wanted to make that point to the judge that th the defense is not the same on both sides. And that with Alex being a co-conspirator, uh, allegedly, who, well, he's no longer here, he's dead now, um, there could be some issues. And uh, Pryor said that his client, Chad, has a right to have his own trial separate from Lori's, separate from his wife's. So that was one of the key things. Now, the prosecution objects to the severance. They say that there is a heavy burden on the defense as to why the judge should should sever the cases, and that they argue that the defense has not met that burden, and that is it's more uh, efficient to have a joint trial because the witnesses are the same. It, it helps with resources as far as money is concerned from the court and the government and the witnesses. Um, Lindsey Blake actually said that the witnesses and evidence will be similar, if not identical, in both of the trials. And she suggested that if they need, one solution could be have the trials together, but have two juries in there. One jury could be Chad's jury. One jury could be Lori's jury. And if there was certain evidence or witnesses or issues that... Um, affected one and not the other, you could dismiss the one jury during that particular portion of the trial. So um, Judge Boyce did not issue a ruling today. This is a capital murder case. And prior, John, uh, Chad's attorney mentioned that there should be there should be uh, some sort of severance because he, he said that um, that is what happens in most cases. So we will see what the judge rules. Uh, as I mentioned, the hearing was about an hour. Couple members of the public there Rexburg police detectives were there. Fremont County detectives were there. Um, we, we, of course, were not allowed to have a camera in there. Chad was wearing a white shirt, dark red tie. Before the hearing started, he and uh, John Pryor were chatting, and, and Chad actually showed, he started to giggle. He started to laugh. Um, I, I've never seen him really smile like that, but it, it was it was audible to the point that I was a few rows back and could hear him laughing. I don't know what the joke was about, uh, but uh, he and John... Uh, uh, we're, we're laughing, kind of joking a bit, but then once the hearing started, he was completely serious. Uh, we have requested audio of the hearing so that you all can listen. Hopefully we'll have that soon, maybe today, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but again, if you're just joining us, Chad's attorney, the big point today, he said that their, their defense will be diametrically different than Lori's. They will be completely different. Whatever their defenses are, they're going to be different. Also, um, Judge Boyce did ask Pryor and the prosecution if, if they know of any confessions from either side, and the prosecution and John Pryor said no. So as of now, there are no recorded confessions that either side knows of. It's not like Chad has a confession or Lori has a confession to committing these crimes, and that's uh, what they said. So um, the story will be up shortly on EastTitahoNews.com. And, uh, oh, I'll give you a quick update on Lori. Lori, yesterday there was a competency hearing, but it was closed to the public. So we don't know what happened there. That was not discussed today during court. Her attorneys were there. John Thomas and Jim Archibald were there. They didn't say anything. They sat, you know, kind of in the audience with everybody else. But um, we don't know what happened in that competency hearing. Um, and we will wait and see. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what the judge says. And we don't have a trial date yet. We will see if that is set soon too. All right. That's the update on the Daybell trial. There's no further hearings scheduled at this point. I imagine there'll be one in December if there's some motions out there. We did get some video of Chad leaving the courtroom. He wasn't a bulletproof vest. He didn't say anything. 
uh, was a short walk from the courthouse over to the jail. And um, now he that's where he's at. Okay, I just grabbed lunch. I'm going to eat lunch. We've got some secret Santa surprises to do. So I hope you all have a wonderful day.